Hey friends, Nas here. Welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. I appreciate the kind words from you in the comments, and hope to continue to make more videos for you. I'm only going to be covering one case today. This story is something I just found out about while researching the Stephen Kosher case that I did in my last video. It's sad, depraved, and horrifying. Today, I'm going to be covering the sad disappearance of Susan Powell. So sit back, relax, and let's get into the video. Twenty-eight-year-old Susan Marie Powell was last seen on December 7, 2009, at her home in the 6200 block of West Sarah Circle in West Valley City, Utah. A friend of Susan went to visit her in the afternoon of Sunday, December 6, 2009. The friend, Susan, and Susan's husband of eight years, Josh Powell, had lunch together. According to her friend, Susan was behaving normally at the time and always said she was tired and wanted to take a nap before dinner. The next day, both Susan and Josh didn't show up for work or call their employers to say that they would be absent. They also failed to drop their children off at the daycare. Authorities issued a missing persons bulletin for Susan, Josh, and their two sons, two-year-old Charlie and four-year-old Brayden. Josh and the children returned home at 5 p.m., but Susan wasn't with them. She's never been heard from again. Josh said he had taken his sons camping in the desert at Simpson Springs along the Pony Express Trail late on Sunday night. He returned home to find Susan missing. He said he last saw Susan at her home at 12.30 a.m. on December 7th as he was setting out on the camping trip. Susan didn't go with him because she felt sick and Josh said he didn't go to work on Monday because he got confused about what day of the week it was. Authorities quickly classified Susan's disappearance as suspicious and executed a search warrant on her home. Her family described her as a devoted mother who would not have abandoned her children, and she left her purse, keys, and cell phone behind at home. Investigators stated on the day Susan was reported missing, they noticed a large wet spot in her home where fans were blowing on it to dry it up. They questioned Josh's story, stating they didn't know why he would have taken the two toddlers camping in the cold weather. The temperatures during the time of the camping trip were well below freezing, with mixed rain and snow. Police searched the site where Josh said he had set up camp, but they were unable to determine whether anyone had camped there recently. However, Braden did confirm that the trip had taken place. A week after Susan vanished, Josh hired an attorney. Authorities named him as a person of interest in her case and stated he didn't cooperate with the investigation. The police briefly impounded the family's minivan and searched it. During the day that the van was in police custody, Josh rented a vehicle to drive. Investigators later determined he'd driven it hundreds of miles before he returned it, but the car didn't have any stored GPS data to indicate where it had been driven. A neighbor said Josh appeared at his home when it was time to return the rented car and get his van back from the police. The neighbor stated he was acting oddly. His hands were badly windburned, and he kept putting lotion on them. In January of 2010, a month after Susan vanished, Josh packed his family's belongings, put their house up for rent, and moved to Puyallup, Washington with their children. Both Josh and Susan are originally from Washington and have relatives there. Josh moved in with his father, Stephen Powell. Josh and Stephen cut off access to the children from Susan's family, including her parents, Judy and Chuck Cox. In a media interview in November of 2010, Josh stated his wife was mentally unstable, and he thought she had left on her own accord, possibly with another man, and was now afraid to return because of the media attention that had generated from her disappearance. Susan's family and Josh's own sister disputed this characterization of her, but Stephen supported Josh's statements. Stephen and Josh plan to publish on their website excerpts from Susan's diary that she kept when she was a teenager, saying the writings were proof that she was a troubled woman and didn't get along with her parents. 
but Susan's family got an injunction to stop the publication. Some of Susan's neighbors stated that she had been unhappy in her marriage and had spoken openly of divorce. One of her acquaintances stated Susan had been saving money for this purpose. The couple met in 2000 and married in 2001. After six months of dating, Susan was 19 years old and Josh was 25 at the time of their wedding. They had initially been happy together, but their relationship deteriorated after they moved from Washington State to Utah several years before Susan disappeared. They filed for bankruptcy in 2007, with close to $200,000 in debt. Susan reportedly described Josh as controlling and claimed that they argued frequently. She was active in her local ward of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, but Josh had stopped attending church services. The couple did attend marriage counseling through their church for about four months. The counseling ended when Susan disappeared. Josh later claimed that the church members tried to alienate Susan against him and pressured her to divorce him against her wishes simply because he was no longer active in the church. For about two months after her disappearance, Susan's family stood by Josh and said they didn't believe he would harm her. In February of 2010, a family friend appointed as a spokesperson for Susan's family told the media they learned that Josh had been emotionally abusing Susan for years and there was at least one episode of physical abuse as well. Susan's family stated Josh alienated their children against Susan and limited her access to the family's bank account, even though she was the primary worker. They claimed he often didn't allocate her enough money to buy food for herself and for the children, and she had to start a vegetable garden as a result. Susan had reportedly said she planned to leave Josh on April 6, 2010, if their marriage didn't improve before then. In the aftermath of her disappearance, relations between Josh and her parents became so heated that a judge ordered him and Chuck Cox to keep at least 500 feet apart from each other. There was speculation that Susan's disappearance was connected to the December 2009 disappearance of 30-year-old Stephen Kosher. He had left his St. George, Utah home on December 12th and was last seen the next day in Nevada. Because Kosher was about the same age as Susan, and disappeared from the same state at approximately the same time. Investigators looked into the possibility that their disappearances were linked. Josh actually suggested the two had run away together, possibly to Brazil, where Kosher had been before on a missions trip. However, authorities could find no connection between the disappearances and no evidence that the two even knew each other. In September of 2011, Josh's father, Stephen, was charged with voyeurism in possession of A month before, in August, authorities searched Stephen's home for evidence regarding Susan's case. Authorities found more than 1,000 videos of women and girls as young as eight being filmed without their knowledge in various degrees of undress, including completely nude. Some of the images showed victims taking baths, showering, and using the toilet. Police said it appeared Stephen had been making films for at least a decade. One of the women in the tapes was Susan. Stephen also had pictures of other nude female bodies, with her heads replaced by an image of Susan's face, and photos of himself to a video of Susan. In May of 2012, Stephen was convicted of 15 charges related to the child SA images. He was sentenced to two and a half years in prison. Stephen had earlier claimed Susan was a very sexual person, and that she had wanted to have an affair with him but Susan's family said the opposite was true. One of the reasons Susan and Josh moved to Utah was to get away from her father-in-law's unwanted sexual advances. One of Susan's friends said that she told him Stephen had spied on her while she was dressing, and after she moved to Utah, she told Josh she never wanted to allow Stephen inside their home. Josh admitted he was aware of his father's fixation on Susan. In her journals, Susan wrote that she thought Stephen was a and a bad influence on Josh. Susan and Josh's children were taken into a foster care following Stephen's arrest. The Coxes sought and obtained temporary custody of them. Josh received supervised visitation twice a week and rented a new home and also submitted to a psychological evaluation in his bid to regain custody. 
The psychologist who evaluated Josh diagnosed him with narcissistic personality disorder and noted that while he was an affectionate and attentive parent, he repeatedly said inappropriate things to Charlie and Brayden about Susan's family, in spite of being told not to, and believed a militant faction of the LDS church wanted to kidnap them. Among other statements, he told the boys that the Mormon police had put Stephen in jail on false charges and were trying to do the same thing to him. He denied any inappropriate interest in but he admitted he might not have turned his father into the police if he had known about the child essay materials. The police in Utah had found about 400 images on Josh's computer in 2009, but the authorities in Washington didn't learn about this until November 2011 and didn't actually see the pictures until January. In February of 2012, the judge ordered Josh to undergo a psychosexual evaluation and a polygraph test and said he could not regain custody of his sons until this was done. The next weekend, during his next visit with Charlie and Braden at his home, Josh let the boys into the house, but locked the supervisor out. He then attacked the children with a hatchet and set the house on fire killing himself and his sons almost instantly. He left messages behind for his family and lawyer, apologizing for his actions and saying that he couldn't live without his children. None of the messages mentioned Susan. Authorities stated it appeared that he had been planning the murder for some time. He had stockpiled gasoline and had given the boys' belongings away. In late March of 2012, newly unsealed documents revealed additional evidence police had that tied Josh to Susan's disappearance. Her blood had been found on the tile floor next to the couch in the family home, and her cell phone was in Josh's car, something he couldn't explain. When Josh turned Susan's phone over to the police, it was turned off and missing its SIM card. He later gave his own phone over to the authorities, and it too was missing a SIM card. Susan had quite a bit of money and insurance on her life. A short time after she vanished, Josh began drawing on her retirement account, and he canceled all of her upcoming chiropractic appointments. She left a will in a safe deposit box registered in her name only, along with a handwritten letter addressed to her family and friends, saying Josh had threatened to destroy her, and told her the children will not have a mother and father if she divorced him. The letter stated if she died, it may not be an accident, even if it looks like one. Their son, Charlie, told the police that Susan accompanied them on their camping trip the night of her disappearance, but she didn't come back with them, and he didn't know why. Weeks after his mother disappeared, after he had moved to Washington, Charlie told his teacher that his mother was dead. In February of 2013, less than a week after the one-year anniversary of the murder's Josh's brother Michael Powell took his own life by jumping off the roof of the parking garage at the apartment building where he lived in Minnesota. Michael had been fighting with Susan's parents over the $2 million in life insurance Josh had taken out on himself and his sons. Josh had designated his brother as a primary beneficiary of the policies, but Susan's family challenged this, and the insurance refused to pay until the issue was settled in court. Michael had been a big supporter of his father and his brother, and stated that he believed the police were conspiring to frame them both. After Michael's death, authorities announced they believed Josh was involved in Susan's disappearance, and Michael had helped him cover it up. Michael sold his car for salvage value to an Oregon junkyard two weeks after Susan's disappearance. Investigators didn't learn about this for two years, and never adequately explained why he had done so or how he used the vehicle in the intervening period. The two brothers communicated using a computer code, most of which police have been unable to crack. In May of 2013, authorities stated they were closing the investigation in Susan's disappearance. In July of 2018, Stephen Powell died of natural causes in a Washington hospital at the age of 68. Susan's family had been very critical of the police investigation particularly after Josh, Charlie, and Braden's deaths. Susan's family stated that the authorities had more than enough evidence to move forward with the charges against Josh, 
and if they had, they could have prevented his death and the murders of the children. Susan Powell's description is that of a five foot four Caucasian woman. She had brown hair and blue eyes, and was last seen wearing a long sleeved dark shirt with dark dress pants. She was 28 at the time of her disappearance, and she would be 41 now if she was found. If you have any information in regards to Susan's case, please contact the West Valley Police Department at 801-963-3462. Foul play is suspected in Susan's case due to the circumstances involved. Susan Powell has yet to be found. It's a tragic and heartbreaking story. I feel for the family members that are left devastated by this loss. Between Susan and her two kids, it's really terrible and one of the more haunting stories I've looked into. Thank you for watching. Stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one.